how to sit with lower back pain. Sitting has been one of the biggest issues in my personal journey of chronic lower back pain. And so this is something that I can relate to personally. We're gonna talk about the best chair or best seats. Then we'll talk about preferable body positions versus less preferable body positions. I'll share my personal setup. Then we'll talk about the best thing you can do. My goal today, as always, is to give you the most valuable information for you to help you in your life. So here we go. There is fluid in our discs and the fluid can imbibe, which means come into the disc and the disc gets more plump and it, it kind of gets pressed out of the disc through pressure and the disc becomes less functional. This happens all day, every day. If you drive to work, you can set your rear view mirror in your car at a certain point and mark that point. When you're driving home from work, check that marker in the mirror and you'll see that you're a little bit shorter eight, nine hours later in the day. And that's because the fluid in your discs has come out of the disc. Fluid comes in, fluid goes out. It's the ebb and flow. What they found in the research is this depends on your body position and there were some really interesting findings. So they used differential fluid that they injected into some volunteers discs and they found that there were different pressures on the disc depending on what body position you're in and also load. So they used standing as 100% of pressure and you can see the pressure goes up if you lean forward. It goes up a lot more if you lean forward with a weight in your hand. It goes down if you are laying down. So 75% lying on your side and 25% if you're laying on your back. Well, if we look at sitting, 140% of the pressure on your disc compared with standing. You can see if you lean forward, it goes up to 185% with a weight in your hand, 275% sitting is not very good for our discs. I found this to be really interesting. Somebody took this study further by the name of Kramer. He found the point at which discs hydrate and the point at which the pressure increases so much that the discs are getting dehydrated and he drew the line. And so you can see that sitting normal, good posture is on the side of the scale where our discs are becoming less hydrated. If we look on the left side of the line where the body positions that are hydrating the disc, that includes standing, so that's pretty cool. Walking would be over on this side and other healthy activities. I just want you to take into account that despite everything I say today, the underlying theme is that sitting is not very good for us. It's not ideal for our discs. But ultimately, we want to get up and move around more and be more mobile as a species, as, as a human species. The first thing we're going to be talking about is back support or no. A backrest is not necessary, but I don't recommend no backrest if you're going to be sitting all day for long stretches of time. That is a recipe for creating chronic tension in certain muscles. I, I say have a backrest available, but don't use it all the time. That's my recommendation there. The next question will be high or low. Is it better to have a tall seat with open hips and open hip angle or a low seat with more of a closed hip flexed angle? This is a matter of preference, but having a stool that, with an adjustable height or even an office chair with an adjustable height is a great option. Lean back or upright. Leaning back does cause problems with the head and neck position, which goes down the chain. You would have to tilt your head forward if you're leaning far back, and I don't recommend that. I do recommend more of an upright seating position, and if you need a break from sitting upright, then take a rest. But these are short-term strategies and there is no chair i believe that can be indefinitely comfortable and be good for the body it's the variety and the ability to move and change position that the body likes what it's what the discs like to imbibe fluid and become more functional they rely on movement and they rely on changing positions to to get that fluid okay so i get a lot of questions what's the best wedge cushion for your back or what's the best chair or this or that and the answer is they all might work for a couple of hours, but after a period of time, it's gonna become uncomfortable. And that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just points to the fact that our bodies like to move and change position and nothing is going to be comfortable for an indefinite period of time. This leads me into one of the most important things that I can relay to you today is that variety is the best strategy to sitting, to be able to change your body position frequently and to have options so that you don't only have one chair that you sit in all the time because it is the lack of variety in anything that leads to repetitive trauma. And then includes something as static as sitting. 
you still can get repetitive trauma from sitting. And if you've ever had a standing desk, then you know that even standing, avoiding sitting completely is not sustainable all day long because the repetitive trauma of standing in one place all day long becomes painful to your body. We are designed to move and to change. And so the best thing you can do to get through your day and your life for your body is have variety in your seating positions and your options and to get up frequently. And the good thing is there are an infinite number of body positions and seating positions and ways to sit. And so that leads me now into my desk office set up here to allow me to have that variety. It's called a plyo box. This is what you'll find in a gym. And the reason I like the plyo box is because it has three different heights depending on how you turn it. And so that gives you variety. I can easily change the height and then I can stand I can put one foot up on it, I can type on the computer, I can switch sides, and I can get that variety. I can also fully get up on top of this, which is why I have the cushion. And this is actually probably my most sustainable form of sitting. I can sit like this longer than any other position, and so I love it. And so I would recommend a kneeling bench or a prayer bench to anyone. This allows me to sit in a low seat and type on the computer. Uh, I do work at a computer a lot. And so this is my strategy, is variety. And if I were to recommend a long-term strategy, it's not about the chair that you're sitting in. It's about the body that's sitting in the chair. And so the most valuable thing that you could do, the best thing you can do for sitting comfortably, if you have imbalances in your body, bring it back into balance. And that can't happen in one day or overnight. It takes weeks and months to do. But if you can work towards balance, then you might be able to sit comfortably in any position or any chair. In addition, the pressure on your discs is also influenced by muscle imbalances. Someone in a standing position with muscle imbalances like this have more pressure on their discs than someone that has more balance in their musculature. It's always the best thing you can do to improve the body rather than find more tools, tricks, and higher technology things to make you more comfortable. Sitting itself, no matter what, is going to be dehydrating your discs. We wanna be able to do the things that are gonna rehydrate the disc, and so that will just come along with the variety and incorporating maybe laying down breaks and standing and walking breaks in between the times that we spend sitting, and that's the strategy that I recommend. So work on the one thing that you're gonna take with you wherever you go, and that will allow you to sit more comfortably no matter what you're doing. Now remember to hit that like button and help spread the word that there is a solution to chronic lower back pain and help YouTube to spread this to more people.